Good day, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. I think it's fair to say that typing paper is essential, foundational to the typing experience because obviously without paper, it's difficult to use a typewriter to write with. I realized just this week, in fact, just yesterday, that I've been on a journey involving typing paper. Just this week, I discovered another kind of paper that I like, and I started thinking about all the different kinds of papers I've used over the years that at the time I thought was my favorite typing paper, but my tastes have changed and evolved over time, and I thought it would be fun to share with you a little bit about my typing paper journey. Stay tuned. Let's go back in time a little bit. Uh, back to, well, when I first got into typewriters in the mid-aughts, uh, more seriously, I think like a lot of people, I was using just a copy paper, whatever kind of paper I could find. Uh, occasionally, I would use um, kind of like the letter writing paper you see in, in notepads for letter writing. But there was a certain point where I kind of started using this um, Ampad. This is the green engineering paper. It has a quarter inch grid on the back side and then on the front side it's unlined but it has some fields or boxes up in the top that's handy for writing a title and a date and you know some kind of a heading. Um, I use this a lot in my blogging and my typecasting uh, in the last uh, decade or so. Several reasons. I think first of all because I liked the color of it, this light green color. Uh, it just looked different on the screen as a typecast than just normal white paper. And I like the little forms, the pre-printed boxes where you could type a title and a heading. So I use this a lot, but I didn't really think much about the, the weight of the paper or how well it took typewriter ink. I was more interested in the way it looked and felt and uh, just the convenience of it. And then I was uh, in a thrift store uh, here in Albuquerque and I came across this pack they sold it for 50 cents. This was a legacy pack of Mead typing paper. The properties of this paper is it's it's pretty thin, uh, thinner than the kind of printer paper or copy paper you might see today. And it didn't really feel like a recycled paper. It had a different texture to it. And due to its age, it has a slight warm color to it, almost like a lighter colored newsprint paper. But I like the feel of it, and I thought, well, this is kind of legacy typing paper, and I would like to find something like this. And so I took that UPC product code and started doing a little bit of research online and found uh, Another Mead kind of paper that had a product UPC code one digit off from the other stuff, and it's basically the same kind of paper. And so I bought a whole box of these 100 sheet packs of this paper, and I used it for a long time. I still have some of this in my typewriter bags for my ultra portable typewriters. Again, I was interested in this paper more because it was legacy typing paper, and I thought, well, this has got to be the best kind of paper for typewriters. This is what people used back back in the day for typewriters. But I didn't really pay attention to actually how well it worked necessarily. This actually takes ink a little better than standard copy paper, I think. It's not quite as bright white also. It doesn't have all the bleach brighteners that modern copy paper does. So it's a little more of a duller light gray tone to it. But I was happy with it for a while, but then of course, when you have a collection of uh, used typewriters, you find that one of the big problems is the platens are hard. And it's not always convenient or inexpensive to have the platens recovered, either professionally by J.J. Short or do it yourself with uh, heat shrink tubing. And so more recently, uh, I've come across the Southworth brand of resume paper. And these are nicer quality papers designed for, you know, professional kind of resume printing. I get these at Staples. And most of these are like 24 pound papers. And they come in various textures and finishes. And there's also, uh, they make a 32 pound paper, which I was recently given, not only do I have this 100 sheet box, but I was given like a 500 sheet box of this 32 pound resume paper. 
Um, the 24 pound Southworth paper actually takes ink pretty well and it's fairly thick and cushions a platen pretty well but sometimes on my harder platen machines I still need some kind of a backing paper for the 24 pound. But I found the 32 pound paper in the, in the resume paper here was too stiff. Some of the ultra portables, they just won't feed this paper as well because of the stiffness of it. Right, so that was a problem. So I have all this 32 pound paper that I'll have to find another use for. But it is white and it could be used for art paper, sketching, or a lot of different purposes like that. Well, in the interim, of course, going to thrift stores and all that, I've found other kinds of paper. Obviously, there's the erasable uh, typing papers. I have a couple different samples of that. And I never really liked the erasable typing papers. I don't like the texture of it. It kind of has like a waxy feel, obviously, because it's intended to be erasable. And, of course, the imprint on the erasable paper never is as dark as on a more permanent kind of paper, right? So uh, these are kind of historical curiosities in some ways, the erasable papers and the legacy typing papers. Oh yeah, I also got a pack of this paper. This is a letter writing paper in a U.S. Army letterhead, and it's not standard dimensions of, of eight and a half by 11 that you would have in the United States. This is actually seven and a quarter by mm, 10 and a half. So I don't know what that standard it is you guys probably know better than me but that's another kind of letter writing paper and it is very similar in weight and texture to this legacy mead typing paper thinner but it has a really beautifully offset printed uh, US Army letterhead which is pretty cool so it is fun to collect you know uh, legacy papers but it doesn't necessarily mean they're the best paper for typewriters these days so as I say, yesterday I was at my friend Ethan's and uh, he said, hey Joe, I have a ream of paper I need to give you. So Ethan has been involved in making his own notebooks and we made this notebook together, the small size, quarter page size, and he found that he really liked using color laser co laser paper, heavy weight, like 32 pound color laser paper. It works really well for sketchbooks. It takes fountain pen, ballpoint pencil, different kinds of markers really well. Uh, it's a nice quality paper. Well, so he gives me this, this ream of 500 sheets of 11 by 17 inch. This is Hammer Mill premium color laser paper. And I've never typed with this stuff. We actually cut down quite a few of these sheets in half to make letter size 8.5 by 11, but the 11 by 17 size, of course, you could fold in half and make signatures for hand-stitched 8.5 by 11 inch books, which was what the original intention was of this. Over at Ethan's yesterday, I had my Royal Mercury, which uh, does have a hard platen, right? And I started typing some miscellaneous things, and man, I discovered I really like this paper for typewriters. Again, discovering a new paper uh, that you like is really fun. And I had thought I went through the same process with this uh, Southworth paper. And when you think you found the next great typing paper, what usually happens is you think, this is it. I found the best paper. I'm sticking with it. And I thought that was the case with this. But what I found is this 32 pound color laser paper rolls through my machines, even machines with hard platens, really well without slipping. It makes a really great imprint, and I like the texture of the paper. It feels somewhat like, resembles more of a magazine finish paper, that, that nice sizing and the smoothness of it. Uh, yeah, I was pretty impressed. Uh, so. I have the 32 pound color laser paper here. This is the Southworth 32 pound uh, resume paper. Obviously the Southworth paper is toothier, it's more fibrous, whereas the color laser paper is much smoother. Some of my other machines, as I indicated earlier, some of my ultra portables that need you know new, new platens, uh, the 32 pound Southworth doesn't feed as well. It, it's stiffer, it doesn't bend as easily. And I realized just yesterday, after having typed on this color laser paper, that it's designed to roll through a printer. In other words, it's designed to bend around rollers. 
So you have legacy typing papers. They must have been the right paper to use with a typewriter, right? Because that's what was used back in the days of the typewriter. But paper has engineering applied to it, from the kind of inner material to the kind of sizing and surface treatment of the paper for ideal application for whatever kind of ink or printing technology it's using. Papers have different engineering principles. And it turns out this colored laser paper, even though it's 32 pounds, it's designed to bend through a printer, the rollers. And so it works well in a typewriter because, of course, we use rollers in a typewriter, right? So I went ahead and did a number of tests with about a dozen different typewriters last night on this 32 pound color laser paper and I was pretty impressed with it. Well, these are just some of the tests that I did yesterday uh, evening uh, on this uh, hammer mill 32 pound color laser paper. So started off with the Royal Mercury, which is the typewriter I had used yesterday. And you know, the Royal Mercury has a really nice even imprint. It always has had good alignment and no shading. And I noted yesterday that the several sheets that I typed were almost as nicely printed as a daisy wheel carbon film imprint. I thought it was very impressive. The uh, line weight to the Royal Mercury's letters is thinner, so it doesn't appear to be quite as dark as some of the others, but it's very even and uh, nice quality. So then we go to the early 1960s Hermes 3000, and you can see the imprint quality is nice and dark. Again, none of these typewriters had any issues with the uh, paper slipping or not feeding properly, but uh, I was very impressed with that and the Olympia Reporter electric type R machine. Again, a very nice imprint. My Groma Calibri, uh, the ribbon on it is probably starting to get a little dry, and you can see a little bit of shading on the lowercase, the bottom of the lowercase letters here. So uh, that probably needs an on-feed adjustment. But other than that, and of course I had another skin here between the Q and the W at the start of it. Smith Krona Electric, I forgot to underline the title there, but uh, it, it has always been a nice dark typer and this is no different. And then, so your Smith Krona Silent Super, I was actually quite impressed. Uh, the Silent Super looked really good on this paper, better than I remember seeing it on some other kinds of paper. Uh, it's probably as dark as any of the others. It's, you know, as dark as the Olympia Reporter, but it's a sharper, crisper imprint. Hermes 3000, this is the 1970s uh, boxy plastic one made in France, sans serif typeface. Uh, the ribbon is a little older, not quite as dark as some of the others. You can see the contrast here with the silent super here. It was nice, even imprint as well. No problems with it. The Royal Quiet Deluxe, uh, it had a few issues, so something happened on the R here on the, the start of it, uh, but other than that, it was okay. The imprint's not quite as dark as some of the uh, other typewriters. And I do have a few letters on that machine that do tend to do a little bit of shading. And that's probably just a, an alignment issue at the type guide. The Olympia Studio 45 was a really nice machine. It had a nice crisp uh, look to it as well. Uh, Hermes Rocket was probably the worst of the bunch, but I think that ribbon is uh, getting rather dry. And you can see uh, starting out, the Q and the W here were pretty light. I don't think that's the paper at all. Again, I think it's just the typewriter. And then my wife's Olympia SM3, really beautifully dark and it's wonderful and it's amazing because she doesn't really use it all that often so I was really surprised at how well that actually uh, printed on this paper. This paper becomes its own backing paper. It's heavy enough, 32 pound, it dampens the hardest platen imprint and we're just looking at the back side of this hammer mill color laser paper you can see a few of the typewriters, the periods do cause some dimples. We're getting some side lighting here just to dramatically accentuate the effect. But it looks to me like this 32 pound paper actually serves pretty well as its own backing sheet. In other words, offering a little bit of extra cushion uh, to the uh, platen that normally you wouldn't get with thinner typing paper. Again, more discoveries about paper. Hey, they're engineering paper, even though we're supposedly in the post paper world. The computers have taken over. Nobody uses any more paper. Yeah, right. Look at that. They still make and sell a lot of paper and 
paper is engineered now differently than it was before and maybe in this case some color laser paper might be pretty applicable to a typewriter. So what I've been doing recently when I take a typewriter out and start writing with it is I have a, a folder here. The current folder is the yellow folder and it has a little label that says fancy paper. Uh, this is my fancy paper. So I have been uh, keeping the various assortments of the Southworth papers, the resume papers, in here. So I always have some available and some of it is cut down to uh, half sheet sizes, right, for smaller letters or whatnot. But, um, so I'm going to just put some more of this hammer mill now in this same folder and I'll have a, an, another assortment of paper to use for typing. I'm going to continue doing some more tests with both the resume paper and this uh, color laser paper and see what good or bad transpires. But in the meantime, I uh, invite you guys to uh, drop a comment down below. What is your favorite? typing paper that you like to use right now. I know there's a lot of different factors. Cost is one of them. I, I have no problem with typing on the backs of envelopes and advertisement flyers or whatever. I think that's one of the beauties of typewriters is we can be very thrifty and reuse paper. But also, you can buy new papers like this that are pretty darn good quality. So what is your thoughts? I'd love to hear them down below. Drop you a note, and in the meantime, wish you guys the very best. Stay well, stay creative, and have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.